very well. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the power of, of uh, a large group. So as we get bigger, we have uh, uh, the ability to do a lot of fun things like that. Yeah, Alex dotted it. All right, so um, let's see here. And then I'm gonna give Mickey the host. There's always this little, little like do 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 as I pull everything up. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Office Hours. Uh, we are uh, here again, yet again. It seems like we were just here a day ago, and we were every day. Uh, if you're here, if you're new to this, uh, we do this every day. Uh, we do this. We do Q and A from seven to eight, and then we have a f more focused hour from eight to nine. Uh, on weekends, we do it from seven to nine, and uh, and then we have Saturdays. We have a really long one. So um, so you're more than welcome to come. You may notice that you're a participant. Um, and some people are participants and some people are um, in the panelists. Uh, to become a panelist, you just need to get here early. So essentially you wanna get here before 6.40 um, and, uh, and we open the doors at six o'clock on the dot. So uh, we open the doors, uh, we'll let people in to the panel at six and we all just chit chat. There's more of this. If you like this, there's more of it at six. Uh, so uh, when we, it's a much looser conversation um, between six and seven and then we start really going through questions. Now, if you have questions and you're in, in the, an attendee, go ahead and put them in the Q&A section. There's a Q&A section at the bottom uh, and uh, put the questions there, put your comments in the chat room. Uh, do not put com questions in the chat room that you expect us to answer. Do not put comments or do not, do not put questions in the, in the chat room. Do not put comments in the question area. Uh, if you don't have a question, um, it, we're just gonna dismiss it. Uh, so so we're not, we don't really manage the comments there. Uh, also try to keep your comment, your questions to less than four lines, uh, six lines on the outer edge, but it really has to be good. Um, but if you send us a really long one, we're just going to dismiss it. Uh, we can't process that in the Q and a. So, um, so just make sure to, uh, I know that you have a lot of things you want to set up in those questions, but you really need to keep it short. Um, so anyway, so, so that's, that's how you manage that. And again, if you want to, uh, join the, the panel, get here before 640, uh, make sure that you have good audio, good video, good internet and raise your Zoom hand so that we know that you wanna join. So, um, so that's kind of the process of here, but you really should be here by 640. Um, once, we start, once I start here talking, we're not gonna bring anybody else in. So, uh, so anyway, so that's the you know, basic thing. We have a Discord. Uh, the Discord is of course a group discussion. It's kind of like Slack, but not Slack uh, and better in my opinion. So, uh, so Discord uh, is there. We, put, we post the link at 630 in the morning, half an hour before this starts. Uh, if by the time I'm talking about it, it's too late. Uh, it's, it's expired. So you need to get here at 630 uh, to join Discord. Um, and, uh, and so that's the, uh, um, the another, another quick note here. Well, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, we have, uh, as I said before, we have a lot of second hours. Uh, the second hour uh, today, uh, Rick Markley is going to talk about volumetric capture. That's volumetric 3D capture. Um, and I'm super excited. I'm going to have to... This whole day, the, today is is the first time I won't be here for the second hour. I have a, I have a production that's going to drag me away. It's, it was hard to even be here for this, but I wasn't going to miss it. But I, I'm going to, it is going to change our policy on records because I realized Rick's is so good that I, I, I'm i definitely going to watch the recording. <laughs> so, and then I was like, oh, I haven't been giving everybody else the recordings and I, and I have a recording. So we're going to start, I'm going to go back and talk to all the people who have done second hours and make sure it's okay with them. But if it's okay with them, we're going to probably start publishing the second hour somewhere that you guys can watch. And, and so we'll, I, I, I was wrong. So anyway, so, uh, so anyway, so we'll, 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 we'll go down, go down that pause. I don't think I'm going to put them on YouTube. I think I'm going to put them somewhere privately for the group, but I want to give a, give, make sure you guys have access to those second hours, because as I said, I'm missing this one. I'm going to miss tomorrow's and I, and I want to see both of them and I now feel your pain. So anyway, so that's, that's going to be coming, but Rick Markley is going to be um, talking about volumetric capture uh, in the uh, second hour. 
Um, and then tomorrow we're talking about what's, what's in your crikey. What do you put in your emergency kits? And then Saturday is a long day. We have, uh, we, we do seven to nine for Q and A, so slightly longer Q and A. And then uh, at 9 a.m., Nick Justice is gonna be talking about uh, Unreal. So really exposing you to all the new Unreal stuff. I think we're gonna get very, very serious about Unreal over the summer. So we want to, um, you definitely want to start downloading it, kind of looking at it. But I think we're gonna try to find ways that we as a group can learn that more effectively. Um, uh, at 10 a.m., we've got Steve Bays, for, former product manager, senior product manager for Final Cut, uh, talking about secrets of Final Cut, deep cuts of Final Cut. So, uh, and by the way, he is in our Discord. So, if it is the best place in the world to to ask questions about Final Cut, uh, building graphics. I'll be talking about building graphics at um, 11 a.m. So, uh, I'm going to be talking about just building basic graphics. Uh, for your broadcasts. And then at 12, Aaron Mailer, we had a bunch of people that wanted to learn more about networking. You know, what are IP numbers and subnets and all that stuff. And so, uh, so Aaron Mailer uh, is going to answer your questions and question your answers and all the other fun stuff. So anyway, so that's what we got coming up. Let's jump into the questions, Chris. Okay, so on th this is a pretty easy one. And actually, I, we need to comment, we're getting people typing answers in the q a and that's potentially really a problem and i think that alex prefers yep. that you don't interact with that yeah, except for thumbs upping thumbs up so if, if you want to vote on something vote on it but don't ever comment don't ever put comments in the q a yeah. so just just you can put thumbs up if you want to see that one move to the top but don't uh um don't interact with it it just makes it hard, harder for us to to manage right it. so brett ramsey is is in Zoom, he wants to do an interview and he wants to essentially what he, I think Brett wants to do is pin the respondent. So when he talks, uh, it doesn't switch to his camera. And in actuality, I think the real question is how does pinning versus spotlighting work? And where do you see the result of that? And do you see it in the internal recorder to Zoom? And actually, Alex, I have some questions about that that I would love so, to check. With. Here's what I here's here's my understanding of it, and anyone can correct me uh, if they'd like. Um, but my understanding is is that uh, you, as an as a panelist, any of us can pin whatever we want. It doesn't affect everybody else. It just means that we get to see that image. So um, a panelist can just sit there and just control what they're what they're showing. A spotlight means that, and I don't think everybody can spotlight. I think you have to be a host or co-host to spotlight. When you yeah. do spotlight, it takes over everybody's, everybody's screen. So it says, I want everyone to look at this spotlight. The only place that that's different is in the record, the you, you record YouTube and in our webinar for the attendees are one thing, right? So what it records, what it provides to the attendees and what it sends out to YouTube is driven by what the host, um, pins or spotlights. I don't think it matters whether now they, hmm. it matters to the panelists. So if, if Mickey pins and he's going pin, 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 it will affect how the attendees see it. It'll affect what goes to YouTube and it'll affect uh, what the record looks like. Um, if he spotlights it, it means that everybody, all the panelists will see it as well. So it'll force that image to all the all the panelists as well, so I don't think that I think that that's where that's the distinction between the pinning and the and the uh, spotlight. I believe um, that's my um, that's my work. I'm gonna theory. try to like I'm gonna pin Chris Fenwick right now, and I have here on my monitor an attendee account. If I pin it, um, no, Chris doesn't come out. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and, well, but then, if I sp I spotlight uh, Chris, then I'm wrong. Chris. It says so pinning is always going to be personal. So pin yeah. is pin is always personal, and spotlight is for everyone. Okay, there you go. So does that mean myself as a co-host, if I were to spotlight Ishai, um, and I, there you go. I, wow, any one of the hosts can take over cutting what goes to, and that's the YouTube monitor, Mickey. You're oh, muted. We lost your audio, Mickey. Oh, sorry. This is a, an attendee account in the in the ah. Zoom. Okay, interesting. And 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 we think that that's what the internal recorder does. Yeah, whatever goes to the attendees is what's going to the recorder. Now, John John Edelson has some maybe maybe may, might have some expert in, advice here. Uh, it's not. Oh, you you, you, you muted yourself, Alex. John John. You're you're muted. Spacebar is the devil. Is the devil. 
John uh, McCain. It is the there devil. What can I say? And you think I know how to do this. Um, I put in the chat the link to the Zoom help. But the main thing, and this confuses people, the, the spotlight puts the user as the primary active speaker for all participants in the meeting. And that goes to the clown recording. But where it confuses people, to spotlight, you have to have at least three participants in the meeting and hmm. their video on and can only be done by the host. So that that's the sort of trick where people get confused. Although it appears that the... Like, oh, oh, go ahead. I just got one thing. Like what Phil and I are doing with the Zoom for the weddings is we actually ask all of the participants in the Zoom to pin their own video of the reception that's being pumped in. So they have to do that manually. And then if I want to bring guests up to speak, I pin them from my view because I'm the one doing the desktop share of the actual video Zoom. So I have control of the pinning, but I'm not showcasing. So my recording contains those takes, but the Zoom recording will not. The only ones that will show up in the Zoom recording are the showcases. The pins are just personal and that's it. Is there any way, I have a, I have a question for you guys. Is there any way to turn off the names I just stick a hyphen in there, but that's all that I've been able to discover to work that. Right. There's I don't think there's switch. any, any, I don't think, I don't there's, think there's any, there's any zoom setting to turn off, switch off names. I don't think there is. And yet every once in a while, I have seen somebody join a meeting who's got nothing. Yeah, I have too. Yeah. Although I've, I want, I've seen, you could probably I'll, enter ASCII code and get away with that. If you were to enter ASCII in the in the prompt, you could probably make a blank. Uh, I know Colin's probably done it. Colin, you might have a finger on that somewhere. There's period. I've done period. <laughs> or just space. Put a put a space. It won't let me. Yeah. It won't let me do space. I, I I was able to do space. So that's just a really? space with no name. Yeah, Although it concerning... on the main one, you can you can put it on if you have that split screen uh, uh, setting. Uh, the you can then use that because that won't have the name on there. But that would only be if you're sending now it we to have, an external. Uh, we video we have system. an event. We have an event where they're going to be seen on screen and they don't want to show everybody's names. And so they were like, "How do we turn these all off?" And so instead of doing that, we're going to basically build a graphic that goes across the bottom of everyone's kind of splits their screen. So there's a, and literally just key a graphic over top of it to keep everybody's anonymity. It'll look fine. It'll look diff a little different, but we, you know, um, now Cyprian, you don't have, you don't have a uh, anything right now, right? Or you have just a period. What do you have there? Well, I had a space and then I, I wanted to test if I could have nothing. And so right now I have nothing. So, um, and I'm on a I PC. I couldn't do that. So yeah, I put a space on mine. It did just, did my name disappear? Just a space bar. You see, you just see one little little thing there. Anyway, so that's just something. That, sorry, we 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 digress. Uh, next question. Yeah, next question. I believe, wait, 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 I believe that you're able to put a space when you rename and when you're in a in a meeting, nope. but you're not able to do it in the profile. They wouldn't let me. It it's wouldn't. I tried to rename myself and it didn't do it. At least on a Mac, really? you can't do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right Before question, we move on, real quickly. Um, okay. Fast. It, I'm sorry. Um, if I'm in a meeting with six people and I want ISO an ISO recording of each of them, you need six computers five computers technically. i'm okay with that so five computers do i then pin and then record on each machine well you you'd pin and i would pin and externally record screen scrape yeah, it but yeah you could do it you could do it any any sort of screen scrape after that would work okay i will move on okay. uh do 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 sorry i was so wrapped up i forgot to read ahead um victor at thanks um I'll have to. Uh, I'm sorry. So one thing to note. Um, I'll have to. Uh, I'm sorry. So one thing to note is while you're asking these questions, remember that someone has to read them out loud. So really think about how you you craft oh. those questions because if we latency. have any issue, we'll 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 just go. How do I find out how much latency is going across my HDMI connections? If I have monitor latency or um, meeting latency, so. Latency. How do how do you figure that out so you can set up your audio and video together? Well, I mean, it, you need you need precision tools to really measure the latency of each device by itself. So you 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 need a a, a Hitomi Hitomi uh, frame. You know, there's a company called Hitomi, and they and I now I can't I can never think of Matchbox. their uh, Matchbox. So Hitomi Matchbox uh, will measure your latency perfectly. You know, you give it an audio signal, a video signal, and it'll tell you it's 
63 milliseconds or whatever that is. Um, it's going to be able to measure that for you. Um, if you uh, don't have that, it's really easier for you to measure the latency of the entire chain because you're not going to be as accurate. And so it's hard to do each one of them accurately, but you can do all of them accurately. And, you know, typically measuring sync is a process of, you know, some, the, e the easiest way to do it is, uh, is for you to just record a piece, you know, just, just play something that has, uh, you know, and, and there's a bunch of things you can do. You can clap. Now the, the key with cl clapping is a technical thing that doesn't work. Like we get this all the time. This is what you want to do, you know, because you, you need to be able to give it a, a frame where you're, where you're together and then, and get away from it quickly. So you go, now you can also use another thing you can use. I don't have one sitting around here, but you can use a slate, you know, just a little slate and just close it. This is what you, this is an, this is just the way we do it when we don't have a lot of time on stage. So what happens that when you're working on an event, there's hundred people working on this event, there's camera operators and there's all kinds of other people. And when you take stage time, it costs money, like a lot of money. Cause you're paying all that time out, you know, for it, it might be costing $40 a minute or something for you to be up there. So you don't want to make your, your, uh, your slate, your, your, your time really uh, expensive. So what you do is um, you can do it. I never trust those, uh, but those are, um, that's the, is that, you know, so the, I just use something more mechanical. And, and what I do is I, uh, um, you, 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 you close the slate, you're recording at the, you know, in your system, then you open it in your editor and you look at the offset between, you know, the, the spike where you close the slate or you clapped um, and the, you know, so you just realign those and you'll know exactly how many frames off you are. Um, you just got to make sure that your recorder doesn't add any, any extra, um, delay to it, but generally that's going to give you a pretty good sense of it. Now, what I do, if I'm doing in an encoder is I'll write HLS and HLS is writing segments. And I go into the encoder and grab the segments, <clears throat> you know, I'll just go and grab the segment I want out of the, out of the actual encoder, because that's telling me what the, the bit, the actual bits are that are going out to the internet. So, um, you know, that's a well, slightly more complicated way to do it, but it's the most accurate way for me to figure that out. So that's the, that's kind of the low key way to do it. There's a lot of, um, video, if you go up to video sync, there's lots of people who have made designs of like the BBC has one that goes across and it, you know, there's this little line that goes across and it has in sync. And every time it gets to in sync it, you see, uh, oftentimes the frame will flash and you hear this beep and you can use that to line it up. I can't do that. I'm not good enough to look at it and actually know that. So, I mean, I can record that and look at it, but I, I don't think you can get within, I, I don't think anybody can get with more accurate than, you know, uh, 30 to 60 milliseconds that way. So I think that you, I think you have to do something more precise. Once we do that, usually what we do is we get up in front of the camera to, to, to cross check it. Uh, and we go, uh, something like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It turns out peas are really good because we call it a pea test because, uh, you, it's, it's very hard to say the P without a very specific mouth motion that is clear. And so you can slur through a lot of other things, but you know, with, with different accents, but P is P. And so, um, uh, so you, it, it's a good way to, to, um, you know, check that. Another way to check it is to have a camera with audio going into it directly, a mic going into the camera. And then that gives you a, you, you, you can listen to both channels. So you listen to your, your entire audio chain, you know, with your separate video, and then you listen to just the camera. And if you can get both of those into one, one ear, you'll hear it echo until you'd line it up. You know, so there's a couple different ways of, of kind of tightening that, that process up to, to check that sync. That's how you sync it up to actually measure it. You need something that's like, you, again, you can do the post or you can do uh, the Hitomi type solution to, um, to measure it and pull it in. That's a really long question to a relatively simple question, a really long answer to a relatively simple question, but obviously it's something that is something we've had to do a lot in a lot of different ways. Uh, any other comments about that? Can you recommend a good time code, time code slate for a reasonable price? Uh, Denikey. Oh, iPad. Denikey or an <laughs> iPad? I was yeah, iPad, iPad has. For a physical a, one, I was, I was talking physical, but yeah. Denikey. Denikey is the only yeah. real, yeah. like, you know, there, there there's no cheap other one. brands. Nike. No, I yeah. know. I just Beto, kind of figured I Beto wanted to get a well good, reliable brand. Good. Okay, good. Cool. Ambient Wood makes some, but they're not that, they're not as good as Danny Key. Yeah, I'll take a look. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that, it's just like the the one that I use. I mean, if I'm if I need a digital slate, I generally use my iPad. There's a slate app on the iPad that works relatively well. 
Um, and you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm on a, something where I, I want the time code, but I don't want to spend the money on a key or I don't want, I, but anytime you start getting serious, you're just going to get a key Cause if, if you, if it's important to have a time code like that in a large scale, whatever the cost of the key is, is, is a tiny to the amount of hours it's, you're going to lose if it's wrong, you know, like, yeah, so, a- so, you know, so that's, that's the issue. I'm just seeing numbers over a thousand dollars for one yep. of those. So I, I wanted it is. to see if there was a, a simple alternative. They're good money that. makers, though. Like um, every production, just like lo- they love their their photos on set with the slate. So even if they don't need it, they rent it out. And it's one of the things to, to a larger conversation is generally a lot of people try to be as compact and cheap as they can, you know, because they want to be efficient and there's a, an efficiency of that process, or you don't have the money, but you can uh, bid on larger projects when you have more infrastructure. Like you just need to know that like when, when you come with more infrastructure, it's not about having less people. It's about having more stuff, you know? And when you come with a lot of gear, I mean, they, they don't want you to, there's some, there are times when they say, oh, I want you to go into the office. And if you bring a ton of gear, they're like, oh, that was too much. But if you're going into a show and you come with racks of gear, that to the client says, oh, that was worth the money I spent, w- w- regardless of where, whether it is or not. Racks, you, you can't underestimate the, the, the amount of uh, value clients have with racks and monitors. Lots of monitors, lots of racks. Um, and, you, you know, you want to come in with a little computer or a little whatever and, and do it all. But when, you, when you're doing a show on, I, I started doing live streams on a laptop, you know, with Wirecast. You, you, can, you can charge a certain amount for that when you start bringing road cases in, you charge a different kind of money for it. Now you're also doing a different service, but you have to know that that makes a difference for clients in their head, you know, is, is, you know, everything makes a difference, you know, how you send your, your bids, how you uh, send your, you know, if you're sending a slide deck on what you're going to do, you know, I just got a job. I got a job that's coming up this summer. Um, everyone else bid about the same amount of money, but they all sent in a, they literally um, sent an itemized, you know, this is an itemized bid of, of what it's going to take. I sent an itemized bid in, but I sent eight slides that were well-designed of this is how we're going to do it. And this is what it's going to look like. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I got it just on the slides. <laughs> you know, like it's like, you know, and, and, and the thing is, is that they, you know, and, and so, you know, the, the, um, the process of playing harder and, and having things look clean, uh, you know, it, it, I think a lot of us underestimate the value of that. We're like, oh, that doesn't really matter. That doesn't affect the signal. But yeah, but it does, but it does affect how the client looks at you. Chris? When I travel to edit, I always, you know, I'm moving to a, edit, uh, uh, a hotel suite for three days for a quick turnaround to edit. I always show up with an iMac Pro, second monitor, the whole rig. I don't yep. show up with a laptop. And my clients feel like they're getting their money's worth. We, we kept track of it for a while. And one year we... we, we estimated that we made $2 million with the green, uh, the green face plates on the elementals. Like literally the green face, plate, like, like the green face, because what would happen is, is someone come by and what are those? I said, oh, those are hardware encoders. They're, you know, they're expensive. And, da, 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 da. and then they think you really know what you're doing because you've got these big, you know, and, and, you know, the elementals are, are playing, but the thing is, is that, you know, they, they were, uh, we, we, you know, our guys, some of our guys would take those face plates off because it was harder to get to the buttons. And they get a real talking to from me about that. I was like, I spent a lot of money on those, you know, like, like, you know, like those, you know, those are expensive boxes and I, you know, we need to show them off, you know, lights and the lights are important, you know, in, in, in the system. So, uh, you know, so those things, it may seem like a small thing, but it's a big deal. Like, uh, you shy? Yes. They have a great app on the, for the iPad. It's called movie slate eight. Yep. That's the one. That's the one. It's amazing. A very mature product. You have time code sync camera sync iCloud uh, it's yep. really very very and deep. you can do you can do LC LTC jamming you know through yes, the headphone jack. Anything. so it's, yeah, it's yep yeah it's great um, next question Chris yeah I was gonna say let's move on so um, virtual mass auditions a hundred students or so each needs to get a couple of minutes how would you do it zoom yeah yeah I do it with zoom I, I would do it I would do I'd it with zoom with webinar so I'd webinar, have them all stacked yeah. in a webinar and 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 then and then pull them in one at a time and do the auditions. Um, if if they're if it's okay for them to do it in front of each other, you know that's the the, the other way to do that. So if 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 the, if the auditions are going to be in front of the other ones, then you do it that way. Otherwise, what I would do is set the way we've set it up in the past is you can either do two meetings, you know, two Zoom meets or 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 two or a webinar and a meet. But the point is is that you have everybody in one, and we say okay, it's time for you, you know 
Julie, it's time for you to go. And we give you a link and you, whoop, you, and you, and you jump over to the, to the main one. Um, you know, but you're, you have them in a, you have them in an area that you can, we do that for shows a lot. So if, when we have shows that, that people are coming in one after the other over an hour or two hours or three hours, we don't put them all into the show. Um, we put them into a green room. They can all hang out and talk. And about 10 minutes before they have to go live, we push them from one, one uh, from the green room into the main event, you know, and that's a, it, it's an easier way to kind of keep everybody loose. Um, it's hard to keep them focused. If it's like a three hour show, you don't want to have all of them come in at the beginning, you know, so we keep them, keep them loose. And we use that time to check them and to kind of make sure that everything's working and, and make sure that they're ready and give them the last instructions. And then we send them in Tucker. And one alternative would be to uh, spotlight for just use webinar, like you're talking about, but spotlight the person facilitating the, uh, the group that's not on deck and then uh, up the, person that's on deck to panelist and so the spotlight is still on the rest of the people or is still on the uh facilitator and then just in the panelist view they have access to each other if yeah that makes sense. yeah it does I, I think that um i think the real question is whether everybody can see each other or not you know like if, if you, you uh, then you're going to use two of them um and then you know but i um anyway yeah so next uh next question oh did next, you have wait oh that was it yeah go ahead next question yeah next question so what's the minimum upload speed that i need for a feed and what if you have multiple devices feeding from that do you just keep adding it together yeah yeah i mean generally whatever you're using times two is is is, is the base the base so if i'm sending a four meg stream to youtube i need eight megs minimum like that's what I, that's, you know, like minimum. And, and I would, and, and that means that nothing else is using it, you know, like I'm not like that internet. And so typically if we go into a stream, we will, um, what we ask the IT for is carve me out. Can you carve me out an extra VLAN, a VLAN with the prioritization so that I know that I'm always going to get that number. Like I want, you know, I want twice what I'm, what I need. And then I, I want to know that I'm always going to have that number there. You know, the other thing that we do is, We'll come in, if we come in and we don't think that their IT team knows what they're doing, now, which is often, uh, we'll say, hey, could we put a QoS box on, on, your, on your WAN? <laughs> you know, like, and usually if, if the IT team isn't, you know, when I say don't know what they're doing, it means that they, they kind of don't have one. They have like somebody at the office that runs it and they don't really have a, a, a dedicated IT staff. If they have a dedicated IT staff, we just talk to them about VLANs, we can't do that. But if, if I go to, if I'm gonna stream out of a bar, they have a, some router, that they, that they, that someone sold them or they bought at Best Buy running the whole thing. And I say, Hey, is it okay if I put a QoS on your, on your WAN? And they, they, usually they're fine with that. And then what we do is we, we build our own VLAN. <laughs> you know, so we take over, you know, we give them back enough that they don't complain. And then we keep everything else, you know, to, you know, to make sure that our, our uh, stream goes well. Um, but we, you can car, you know, with a good router, you can carve up a bunch of VLANs so that you can, you know, give different people, you can put one on the AP and one, one on the access points. So one on Wi-Fi, then you can have one on some of the wired things. And then you can still make sure that your encoders are all, or your laptop, if you're streaming from a laptop or, or a computer um, has its own dedicated bandwidth. And so, um, you know, bandwidth is very important. So yeah, you, you want to have at least two X and you got to keep stacking that up. So if you're going to stream to, uh, and that's one of the things where, you know, either using something like this, this little link um, is uh, this will adjust to the bandwidth. So it will using Zixi and, and the software that Elemental put on this link, it'll go up and down and try to give you the best quality um, all the time with the bandwidth that it has, which is super useful for kind of, um, easy, not, don't have to think about, you know, kind of streaming. Uh, Phil, you had a question. Yeah. Um, really cool. Uh, second hour yesterday production in the cloud. I just kind of wanted to see if you could give us a two minute summary of what your takeaway was on that. Just a sort of high level would just, is this something Alex would use or what's your thought about that? So it's something that I'm, I'm looking at using. You know, like, and that's why I wanted to bring, uh, I, that's why I wanted to bring Jeff on is it's something I'm definitely for some big events I could see, or some, I, I guess what I would say is, is I would lean towards, uh, uh, I think that where it works well is, is you're doing the same kind of event over and over and over again, that is event, not a like certain scale. The sporting right. events, I think make, it makes a lot of sense because it's kind of the same flavor of it. You know, I worry about, um, you know, I worry about setup. I worry about stability. I worry about a lot of things in, inside of that. I think that 
Um, but I, what I'm wrestling with right now, when I watch what Jeff's doing, when I'm watching what, what, what you and Leland are doing, um, is where is it me being just old <laughs> and old and crusty and where is it being stable? You know, like, and, and that's why, and that's why I'm going to throw vMix onto one of our machines so I can start to play with it. Um, is because I want to kind of feel for it. But the, the issue that I have with, again, with all of that is A, centralizing my whole show into a single machine, you know, really worries me. You know, I had, a, I had an event a couple weeks ago where we lost a machine, you know, just went down. Uh, and I still started on time, you know, because it's, it's one piece of a big puzzle, you know, so it goes down and I just move over to what, I move over to the backup. I mean, that's why you have backups, you know, and I don't, and there was no like trying to figure it out. It was like, oh, and, and you got to get, it went down eight minutes before the show. So it's not like it went down. It went down eight minutes before the show, and I and I just we you know we, there was like a there was like oh and and w but within a minute we had we had a solution for it you know and so so that's the you know this that's what when you have hardware it's more complicated and it's much harder to build and it's more expensive and it, and has less features, hmm. but it's it it tends to be more you know bulletproof. Now I think that when someone like Jeff who's really dug into it deep. You know, I, I, I would say his may be as bulletproof or more bulletproof, you know, in the way that he's building it. I do, you know, I just get concerned with people losing connections when they're controlling it. Right. You know, like not, not so much the cloud losing connections, but for people's individual. But, you know, when we're streaming, I worry about that for myself, you know. And so so I think that and, what's and the I know compelling that argument kind of a, for it? You know, what is what's the thing that says pushes you over the, the hump and well, says you really need this? Solution? Well, so, so some of the stuff that I've done in D.C., uh, and some of the stuff that we're kind of building up for this this summer and into the fall, uh, the, the, one of the advantages of having some hub, and because a lot of what like Jeff's doing is stuff that we were doing in hardware at at in in DC, where we have all these feeds coming in from all these different things, but but we had a room that you could sit in and look at it, and he just can look at it from the outside, which you know may be as effective as what I'm doing. I don't, I, I'm not sure yet. But what we would do is I've got, let's say I've got a sh I've got four shows and I'm gonna jump from one show to the next. I'm gonna do playbacks, you know, in between those shows and they're not all in the same place. So I've got crews that are cutting a show locally in four cities. Their feeds all come back to me. I'm now cutting between those, sh I'm jumping back and forth between them. Uh, so like we had some shows where basically there's four different cities. Um, they each have their own shows. When one city is, is doing their event, I'm sending that to the other three cities, as well as broadcasting it to YouTube, as well as putting it on the press pool for the for uh, networks. And so and then when I jump to the other city, I, I, I do this, I, I move around and I might have a studio that I'm that's local that I'm jumping to and then cutting cameras into as well. And so so being able to have one place where all that stuff's coming that I can reroute is very, very powerful. I mean, you know, it's it's, you know, for a long time, the only company, only people that could do that other than us were networks, you know, right. and so. And so I think that this cloud op gives you the opportunity to do a lot of that without having that level of infrastructure. I do think we have to think about the monthly cost. When he started talking about monthly cost, that adds up pretty quickly. Right, right. You know, if, if you start doing it. So if you, a lot of that decision process is if you're doing enough flow, you know, if, if you've got enough demand, then it makes sense that rent is not that high. You know, if, if you're doing one every day or a couple of week or, you know, maybe even one a week, it, that rent is just part of the cost that you have. It's like having... It's like, you know, having an office, you know, I had a, for a long time, I had a 10,000 square foot warehouse full of, you know, gear, you know, and trucks and things and everything else. And that only makes sense if I was doing, you know, what happened was I suddenly had a drop in, in how many shows I was doing. And it's a lot of overhead, but when you're doing, you know, three, two to five or three to five shows a week, then it's, it's just part of the cost of doing it, right. you know? Right. And so, so I think that, you know, it's, it is, you know, I'm watching very closely what, what you and Leland are doing. I'm watching what, <laughs> We're watching what, you. <laughs> yeah, what, what Jeff's doing, but, but I'm still building in hardware, you know, like I'm not, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm not there yet. And I, and I tend to move really slowly because my primary, uh, my primary Call conversation tolerance. with clients is st stability, yeah. you know, like just that, you know, when they give it to me, I can do something crazy and it will always work, you know, and that's the thing that I, um, and so, so it, as a result, I move very slowly. You know, like I just, you know, and I have to, you know, I'll have to do it. What I'll, what I'm going to do with vMix is I want to set it up and I want to, I'll do shows like some kind of Saturday afternoon shows with you guys where we're, I'm being very clear with you that I'm testing something and, and, um, and then we'll do it until I feel comfortable with it. Or if I see, and then I'm looking at it, like I look at vMix as, you know, there's people that ask us to do shows that are below my, like, I can't really do a show. Um, like I don't have the capacity to do a show for less than $5,000. 
Like I don't have any, there's no, there's no tool that I have that I can offer to a client that's less than five grand, you know? And so if I can, if I could figure out a, an efficient way to use vMix where I have a single operator doing it without a lot of rehearsal and without a lot of other things doing something, maybe I can provide smaller companies or nonprofits or whatever with a $2,000 option or a, you know, a $1,500 option. But right now I can't, you know, I, you know, my, my stuff starts at five and really at five, I look at it like, do I really want to do this? You know, and, and, you know, and most of my, most of the stuff that I bid on is, you know, 20 and above, you know, 20 to 1.5, you know, and, and that's the kind of the, the range of, of the stuff that I work on. And so um, I'm looking for ways to how to make it more efficient because then I want to hire more people to do it. Because part of it is you want lots of you want lots of flow so that you can get good at the processes, you know, and you can and, and also that you can build up um, more capacity. So and, and what I mean by more capacity is more human capacity. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I started this group is because I feel like there's going to be a huge demand for what we're what we do. And I don't have enough people that I know, you know, that I trust, you know, and so, you know, building up this group and, and having us all learn together and having us collate and cross pollinate is because I think that you are gonna need more people that can do this. I'm gonna need more people that can do this. Other people here are gonna need, need to cross pollinate, um, you know, so that we can, and, and, and we as a group, um, you know, can build a more stable solution for a lot of different clients. Um, Leland, and then we're gonna move on. Just, yeah, just one thing on the redundancy of the software solution that we see is, you know, a PC build, maybe a thousand, 1500 tops could be duplicated over and over and you could have four backup boxes that would simply require you to unplug a few cables throw a new box in and get rolling but the redundancy would have to be in almost a raid format where you'd have machines running on switches where you could switch yep. between those machines if you went down but if there is that initial cost factor you'd have to deal with and no yeah, component hardware it's all built into one box so you can have to right switch. and that's the, the hard part is just that that, that switch over especially if you're in the middle of a show you know, it's, it's more complicated, you know, like that's the, and that's the, um, and we build things that are crazy. I mean, like some of the, some of the builds that I do are two switchers and two routers, and then all of that's routed back into a patch panel that, so I could literally, when you say pulling a couple of wires, all my IO is sitting in a patch panel. So I can literally pull this out and put it in here. And it's, it's all designed for that. And we rehearse it, you know, like, like, you know, if I have to change over to this, this is what we do. And you get it into muscle memory of, of this is exactly where I have to go. So no one has to figure it out. And then in those patch panels, for instance, we have pins. So I don't do any um, normally on my patch panels because I don't want it to normal ever pass through. Normal through. I don't. Yeah, I want it to be um, un non normaled or unnormaled. <laughs> so so you have to put a pin in to close it, and that means that I can see everything, you know. And I can. And if I have these, I have. We'll have these red pins that are out to the world. And if we pull those red pins out, we mean it means we can do rehearsals <laughs> because it means that there's serious about no way to get to it. When you get truly serious about uh, software switching, you can easily deploy a high availability, a high availability cluster where you have a hot spare. Yeah, yep. it'll fail over automatically when things go horribly wrong. So there yep. are solutions out there. You, you can't are. you can't reasonably say that uh, either hardware or software is unsuitable for a particular circumstance. It's just either, it's just not economic for one circumstance or another. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Anyway, next next question. All right, so we have a we normally run signings and events in our retail stores. These are sometimes ticketed, uh, where you get to meet a comic artist or a writer. And due to social distancing, how could we do this? Um, achieve this using Google Meet or Zoom to schedule people like you get this time slot. Um, so I, so what the way I would do that uh, is. We've done a bunch of, we've done ones with, we haven't scheduled them one person at a time, but we've definitely done them over Google Hangouts. Uh, we haven't done any over Zoom yet. Um, but this is a great, this is a great question. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun thing to do, actually. So, so virtual signings are awesome. And uh, this is, this is one of the most important parts of the virtual signing is this. You can sign it virtually. Anyway, so um, not me, you can't, you don't want to sign me virtually. Um, but, but the, the, um, the, the, the interesting thing is, is that if you use what we've done is use a Wacom tablet and put it over Photoshop. And so during the show, you basically pull that up as a screen and you, and you're talking to, and you go, um, you know, hi, Cynthia, thanks for, thanks for coming. Hey, what do you want me to, what, you want me to sign the book? And it's a picture of the book, right? It's a picture of the front of the book. It's not the book of book itself, but it's like a picture of the, of the book or the album 
or what or CD or whatever art that's there and you can sign it they the 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 author can sign it to Cynthia and da, 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 and and then you can email it to them you know so it's really a personalized signing to that person um, that's done and, and you just do a you do a screen share to the to the um, of, of Photoshop or, or affinity would probably work great uh, you kind of set set it all up so that it, it runs there and the way we've done it is actually put it on layers so we just add a new layer and so then you end up with one one file with you know 30 uh, you know, 30 layers. And in Photoshop, we had a way of, you know, kind of just exporting them all out. It would just all export a J bunch of JPEGs with their script. And Were so- Were you also would... injecting the the signed sheet into whatever ebook format they wanted? So they actually had a no. page in their ebook? You could do that too. It's... You could, you could. We, you, you Mechanically, could absolutely it's not do terribly it. difficult. We didn't do it. It was, it was a, we, back then we weren't really thinking about that. We were just, they were just happy that they were signing something because what we realized is they're more likely to frame it or do something if they, if they really care about it or printed out there and it's something that they had. And, and so um, anyway, so that's, that's how we've done the signings in the past. And it was, it's super fun. Like it, it is, I will say that it's a, it's a lot of fun to do it. I don't, you know, you can either do it as a schedule them one at a time. Um, what you could do here is to make it more complicated. And I'm just thinking off the top of my head is you could um, do it, do what we're doing here where, where the, the host has a conversation, they talk to somebody, they answer questions, they, you either do it in a webinar format where people are attendees and everything else, or you bring everybody in and the, and the host just has a round table discussion about their book. And then, then you could just do exactly what we do with, with audio checks and just go from one person to the next with the host, you know, um, <laughs> signing it. Now the, the problem with the signing problem obviously is that the host is at home and you're, and, and you're there, it's harder to sign. So we'd have to kind of figure that out. Um, you, you could, I got a solution. I, I just yes. want to interject because you stepped right there. Zoom it is an old app from 2013 that's available in windows system internals for anyone running PC that allows you to do just that with a couple of control functions and scribe over your desktop. So I'm going to leave a link for that. I was just okay. getting it as you said that. So I just wanted to jump in. And another thing Sorry. you could do is have, I mean, another way to, to do that is probably to figure out some way to do them to do even just a screen share and just do it over white. Cause you can always, or black over white or white over black. And you could always uh, apply that, you know, back to it later, you know, so there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Tucker. I was just going to let you know, we had a level drop on you um, a decent bit about five minutes ago. Okay. Do I sound better now? Yeah. Yes, sir. there. Okay. Anyway, so uh, next question. I, I hope hopefully that answers the question. It's something we've been thinking about a lot of trying to restart again because uh, there's a lot of authors obviously in this area, and we've been talking to them about um, of doing that. I just got too busy with larger jobs, but it's it's a hobby of mine because I think I, I, there was so much excitement around it when we when we've done it uh, uh, that it was I was like, oh, this is something that everybody should be doing. It's way better. We were doing a book signing and you couldn't get everybody, you couldn't sign every book, but you had a, we had a conversation with, you know, 2000 people with an author, um, you know, and, and so it was just an amazing thing where, you know, there was 10 of them in the room or 10 of them in the hangout, but there were, but she's talking and answering questions for, for 2000 people. And, and I was just like, this is way better than going to a bookstore. <laughs> you can actually hear it. You can, you know, I, the bookstores do it to bring in people in, but you could do it as a branding function right now. Um, to do it virtually. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. Sky, before we go to Chris, go ahead, Sky. I'm just completely fascinated with what Rodrigo is doing, and I'm not sure how he's doing it. And it may be a complete rabbit trail of uh, he's doing picture in picture and enlarging the Zoom speaker, but still seeing everybody secondary. So uh, this may be a completely different conversation. I mean, it is a completely different conversation if Rodrigo was sharing what he was doing. Where's Rodrigo? I don't even, where, where is Rod? Blue is t-shirt, red. Okay, okay. Red Rodrigo, cans. what are you, what are you using? Is he running? Uh-oh. No, no, no. He got bored. No, he's he, frozen. He walked away. He's, he's frozen. Okay. Well, he was, well, well, he had, he had the main speaker in a large monitor, but then he had all of the other people. Yeah, that's, a, that's the two screen. You know, so if you do a two screen, you can have like I, I can see and then you can you can either comp them over top of each other or whatever. That's using the second screen. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yep, no worries. Yep, absolutely. Chris, go ahead. I can't hear you, Chris. I have various HDSDI feeds routed through a video hub 40, 40 by 40, some without a reference signal that feed a Zixi encoder. I need to cleanly switch sources without losing SDI lock 
What's the best gear to even out the switches, AGA frame sync, decimator, et cetera? Well, yeah, if you don't want to, so there's two things there. If you're, if you're doing a 40 by 40 and you're not gen locked, you're going to have a, you're going to have breaks. I mean, that's like, that's, that's what the, that, you know, and you can't that's mix television. and match. That's television. And so you would have to put them all through something that's going to have a uh, reference, you know, like it's going to have to have, you're going to have to gen lock them all to do that. The other option is to use, it's not 40 by 40. There's a, like a 12 by 12 or something like that from black magic. That's called a, is it, is it a, what it's, um, it's the clean, clean switch. switch, clean switch. Um, so the clean switch will, will, uh, will do it. Um, the other option is to, you know, you could use a constellation. You got 40 in and 24 out, and uh, you, that'll be clean switched between all of them. <laughs> so, so that's uh, you know those are you know those are different options to to get all because the, the constellation is kind of amazing because it's got all the Teranex inputs and all the out you know the outputs, and so it's gonna you plug whatever you want into it. You got to convert it to SDI, but anything that's converted to SDI goes into it, and now it's all being automatically transformed to the to the base layer and and then you just send it out out of the 24 that you have there so as a kind of a souped up router that you can also add graphics and add playback and everything else it's almost like a switcher you know it's a router that is got a bunch of switching tools so um so it's something to think about if you're trying to do that but a clean a clean switch does do that correction so you plug it into the clean it'll it'll always make sure that you get a clean switch from one to one to the next tucker and just be a, any of those things that do frame sync um, do add latency. So if you're doing in-room iMag, uh, in addition, just make sure you pay really close attention to how much latency you've added. If it's, li if it's live streaming, no big deal. You can accept the latency, but in-room, you don't want to like hand up, and hand that's up. A, that's a super, uh, super important thing about for those of you who are doing events, especially smaller events, and you're getting into it. And you're like, oh, I don't need to, I don't need a gen lock everything because I'm, you know, because black magic doesn't require it or a lot of editors software doesn't require it. And um, the problem is, is you're doing that at a cost because it's going to wait for the next frame, you know, to come in. And so, uh, and, and every, every millisecond counts when you're putting it up on screen because people see it at the same time. Yep. And yep. you go from one line, like typically gen lock signals, you're like one line of latency, maybe a couple lines of latency. Uh, whereas as soon as you go into you know, having to, to uh, frame sync, it is in the order of frames, right. you know, minimum one frame. Yep. Um, Chris? I like this question because it, it leads you to think about other things. Last week on a shoot, I was asked to AD it from home. So I used two uh, WISE cameras, W-Y-Z-E pan cams uh, to, to see the set and an Amazon Echo to hear and speak to the set using the drop-in feature. I've never heard of that. This worked well, but does anyone have a better solution for this? Um, well, I think that I would use, uh, I, I would lean towards uh, either uh, Unity comms or, you know, for me, because I have, because I have a ClearCom Eclipse, you know, and I also have LQ boxes, I would use those <laughs> you know, for that, um, you know, but, but I would, uh, but the unit, because it's easier for me to set up because it's already set up, you know, it's easy, you know, I, I'm, well, it's all, all set up and all I have to do is go, hey, Brian, can you give me another panel? And Brian's like, sure, um, you know, and uh, so anyway, uh, um, so anyway, so, so the, uh, I would use, do that, use some kind of comm system to do that. I think Unity comms is be the least expensive and click and um, clear comm be the, the, the most powerful of those, of those two solutions. And then I, I, I in the past, I, I haven't used a lot of pan stuff. I've used a lot of GoPros for witness cameras, um, you know, for just, you have a couple of them around and, you know, one of the things that you can do is, you know, pass those in. I mean, if you really want to get hardened about it, you could, you know, you can do, I mean, you obviously can do some pan tilt zoom stuff, um, but wide angle, Usually I didn't, what I want on set is I want the camera tap and I want two or three, I want all the cameras that are being used in the, in the scene. And I want two or three like really wide shots that I can, and then you can run them into a switcher, run them into a, you know, some kind of uh, VPN. And you could just sit there and switch between them if you wanted to. You could have a little black magic switcher with all, all the camera, you know, all the camera taps and all the little, all the little cameras going into it. And, um, and then you could, you know, you could have a bunch of little micros if you wanted, whatever. 
if you could see that, if you can see the IP, you can sit at home and just switch between them. And so now you can just kind of view whatever you want to view. You can have eight cameras in there or six cameras and just be cutting between them to see what's going on. Um, you could attach them if you, you want. You could go crazy and put some of them on wireless and attach them to things. <laughs> you know, like you attach them to different like that, that are moving, that are wandering around, or give it. You give it to a PA and say, "I need you to go over and look at this." You know, and and we've definitely we have done that where we've had PAs where we just give them a a, a, a bolt, you know, with a camera. And I need you to go over there and take a look at that. And I need you to go over here and take a look at it. And I'm talking into their, into Clearcom, you know, into their ear. And so, and that's a different, you know, I can decide, I want to talk to everybody through the speaker with one PL and another PL or another direct, I can say, I want to talk to my, my uh, roaming operator. So you can make those, those witness things pretty complex. I mean, obviously that's a, that's a pretty, um, you know, there's, there's scrappy ways to do it. And then there's kind of big ways to do it, but we've done a lot of different ones. Uh, we do we use them a lot for live we most most sets that we build have one or two in the set because you just have to see what's going on you can't just look through the cameras and understand what's going on in the room um tucker yeah the room oh, sorry tucker go ahead uh just get me I'm, there's background okay. noise okay i was just gonna add in that yeah these wise cameras are really nice and convenient 1080p cameras that track and everything else it's just the frame rates are only 15 frames per second so you have to keep that into consideration yeah i but think he was are, using it as a spy cam though yeah it's perfect for just that watching stuff. what's going on set just just try not to use them for production because i know i've seen people try to use them that way and they just don't work well but yep. as far as a monitoring camera yeah they're beautiful and you can get them cheaper online than you can actually buy them in the store i think home depot sells them for like 35 bucks and they're $29 on them. That's great. Chris, next. All right. Here's we're going to have to get a, a award that we give out, Alex, for the briefest question. Alex Jacob says, Good rack mount time code generator. Four words. He wins. Um, I'm trying to think what we use for world clock. Brian, do you remember what, what we used for the, the world clock? Um, uh, it's the big I Ben. In my head. It wasn't a big Ben. It was uh Apogee it's like, still? Oh, no, yeah. it's there's no, like there's like ones that are like eight hundred to a thousand dollars and then they all go to five thousand dollars. You know, and I think yeah. and, you know, they're eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars and they're all like five grand and above. And I and um uh I don't really know of one that's just the time code generator. No, we've definitely had ones that are, we definitely have them that we put in our trucks and, and everything else that is just like, that's the, that's the clock, you know, that everybody sees. Um, and I just can't, I'll have to go back and look at some photos. I just, I, I haven't, I don't know which one. It's always one of those things like we have to go back and find our notes and then we go order one. But I, it's it, because you never, you never think about it. It's just there then, you know, like it's just there and it's just doing its thing. And it's, it's, it's a nondescript uh, manufacturer. Um, so, um, okay. That, it's a short one, and I wish I had a better answer for it. Um, but we will uh, put that in the. Um, we'll figure out. We'll, we'll, I'll post it in Discord. I just have to look, go back and look at my list. I just haven't had to deal with it for a little while. Well, I, and um, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll hunt it down. Like I can okay. literally, I've got the picture in my brain. I know. I can see it. I can see it. I just can't think of who yeah, makes I, it. Yeah. Alex, yeah, yeah. you might want to look at Antelope Audio. They also make some pretty nice locks. Okay. Oh, excellent. And there's 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 one of my favorite booths at NEV is the clock. There's the company that makes clock. They, they make world clocks, so they make lots of production clocks. And it's just a whole thing of production clocks. And I just want to go. I love I love them. Anyway, like so by the from, way, from Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, next question. We're gonna we're gonna start going really fast here. I produce a podcast using Zoom for video and Zencaster for audio. I love Zencaster, but the process is full of bugs. Do any of you? Do, do this and if so are there any tips or recommended tutorials i think zoom will kick you a sound file if that's all you need but you can also well, but, strip it off oh if you're doing a podcast right yeah i'm not sure this is philip shane i don't I, I don't see there must be something special he's doing or maybe is zencaster also broadcasting or, or posting or something i don't i don't know what zencaster does i think that zencaster go ahead mike brian so Zencaster basically gives you bi-directional low latency audio and records your audio locally on both ends and creates a file that basically then if you're the podcast host, it then emails it to you essentially. So hmm. it's, um, but I, yeah, I've used it two or three times basically doing podcasts with folks. Um, 
but and I haven't had, I mean, I've, I've, this exact workflow is exactly what we did and it seemed to work fine, but I haven't done it enough times to have run into the bugs that they may have run into. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have a better solution, Sky. I tried it last week on my, uh, lo my podcast and it does zoom will split out the audio of the individual speakers. So I was able to clean up. The hard part is, is I wouldn't, the, the, and it's one of the things that I've kept away from wanting to, uh, one of the big reasons that I haven't wanted to do a podcast with what we're doing here, which I'm, go I'm going to break down and do, um, but I haven't wanted to do it because I don't like the audio quality of Zoom. You know, I just feel like it's very, uh, you know, I, I just don't think it's great. And so- well, no, but at least but it like, split it split it out separately so I could clean up individually versus a mashed up file. So I no, I, I agree. I agree. What what we've done in the past is we we've used Skype with a you know, and then we recorded locally, and then there's some web. Enders. Yeah, we do double ends, which is an old radio thing that you do a lot of, you know, and and so, um, so we double end a lot of these things, and then what you have is one master file, and you sync all the other files to it, and then you recut them all, and um, and then there's a checkerboard. Yeah. yeah, there's a company that I recommended a while ago. Now I can't remember. Someone asked me to go on a podcast and they had this little web, they have a, you know, it's a company that makes a web solution. I'll, I'll try to post it or we'll, we'll come back to it. And it was great. Like I signed up, it la launched a little thing. We had a conversation. It was all audio. We had a conversation and then it, it uploads as, you know, it's, it's uploading with available bandwidth as you're doing it. So within a minute or two after I finished the show, he had my original file that was recorded on, on my computer. Ooh, and yes, it was... Please. Look that it up. was a yeah I'll, I'll find it again and it was super useful and it and it keeps track of it so if it's breaking up it tells you or whatever but it's also rec it's recording a file on your computer so it's not like you don't know it's not like a live feed coming back you know you know, you know for that so um you got one more thing. last question that i think is really good for the end yep. of the hour if you want hasmuk says as a nonprofit organization we create asynchronous how-to and other learning videos kind of like linda how do we invest and prepare our skills and capacity for more interactive user experiences? So we're starting to have that question. That's a great question. <laughs> uh, we are starting to have that conversation in Discord, in the education group. And I said, if you're interested in playing with this idea, um, uh, like this post. So if you're going into Discord and you wanna play with this, uh, I have a bunch of ideas that that I want to try. I think we all have ideas that we want to try. And what I'd like to do is kind of build a group of people that want to put a little time into it in different ways. So we'll probably try to mostly build things that are Squadcast, right? Squadcast is the one that uh, uh, Reese put the, Priestman put the, um, in there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I, what I use for that. Um, but uh, the, um, I, I want to play around. This is this is what I'm interested in doing: is playing around with using many different forms of content to talk about a, a given subject. So you know, and and I, I'd like to do it in ways to start off in ways that are related to what we do. So we can train, you know, build a piece of little piece of training for all of you that is here's how to do something simple. But here's a video, and here's some audio talking about it, and here's. Um, you know, a challenge and here's some assets and here's, and then we're going to have a live stream where we talk about it. And my goal, my goal with the Saturday sessions that we just haven't gotten to first, I just wanted to see if I could do the Saturday sessions um, or we could do them and people would come. But my goal going forward is that we would get into this model where you get reading materials and things to watch and things to research on Monday, you know, and then we're going to discuss it on Saturday. So it's not us doing a seminar on it. It's us answering questions that came up based on what people looked at, you know, so asynchronously, we look at that stuff and we have maybe some audio discussion about it and we have a little video and there's all the stuff you can kind of do in your own time so that we make the talk. I feel like when we get into a point where like, for instance, watching like Steve Bay is talking about what he does, uh, you know, he could put that into a little video and then we watch it and then we don't understand certain parts and now we can go, we can really fill it up with questions. And, and so, um, so that's kind of the thing that, uh, you know, that's where I'm trying to go with it. So if you're interested in playing on that area, just go into the education area in Discord and like that one, what I said, like this, it's, it's probably a couple up. And we're going to build, a, like we did with the 14 languages, we're going to build kind of a private forum area where we just kind of all talk about it for a while. And everyone will kind of take their little piece of it. And we might start a couple of them at the same time. We'll see. Um, it will... 
you know, it would be a little chaotic, but what we want to do is just try to take on something like, and I want to take on something that's for us, but then I want to kind of shift over and do something more generalized, which is, you know, something like for, you know, I'm, I'm interested in bread because I, I, I've been using it as a generalized, like if I can teach people how to make bread really easily and, and cleanly, um, it, it's a, it's a kind of a, a, uh, a general model that works. Um, 14 new likes while you were talking now up to 24, you might have okay, to start so, another show. Yeah, exactly. We might have the education show. So we, and we may, you might make that an hour in, in, in on Saturdays where we talk about it. So we'll, um, you know, so the, uh, so where we talk about like how to do this and we all kind of, uh, clump. so it's eight o'clock and I'm going to, I, one thing I forgot to put in before is if you're interested in sharing this with other people, um, uh, if you're interested in sharing uh, sharing this with other people, uh, there's the link uh, that you can um, send to them or post on Twitter or, or whatever you want to do. Um, the bigger we get, the the more the more smart people we attract, uh, the better the conversations get. Um, we we don't want to we want more people that are in your sphere because you you got here and it's it's been a great it's it's a really great community. We want to figure out how we get this to a sustainable size, which is probably two or three times the size we are right now before the before we all start going back to our regular jobs <laughs> and, and things start to slow down. So uh, if you share it, um, then we can we can keep on growing. Anyway, I again have to go into production. And so I'm going to watch this later, which means that all of you are going to get to watch many of these later because I, I really got the I got the message with this one because I really want I, this is like one I really want to see and I'm not going to be able to sit here in this. So um, Chris is going to keep on managing the comments and questions and Rick is going to take over Rick Markley. Take it away. I'll, I'll go ahead and Thanks, kill Alex. the stream. Kill the stream, Mickey.